overcomer, resilient, caring, are just some of the words that describe the 2016 Frank Kalinske CEO of the Year Award recipient. And her name is Charlotte Hopper. According, according to Assistant Commissioner Rod Bragg, Charlotte is a dedicated, compassionate, and passionate leader. She truly cares for the clients that Grace House serves and has dedicated her life to helping women reach a life of recovery and help. She certainly has proven herself in understanding the needs of women with substance use or co-occurring co disorders. Now, Charlotte has invested 15 years of her professional life at Grace House in Memphis. Now, her impressive career started in 2001 as a uh, transitional counselor. Charlotte brought her own recovery experiences and gentle compassion to the clients who were making a difficult transition back into the community while being newly sober. Lifelong executive um, Sharon Trammell, her longtime executive Sharon Trammell, saw great leadership potential in Charlotte, and she was promoted to the director of halfway, the house, halfway House. When Sharon, considered a legend in our field, passed away in 2010, Charlotte was hand selected to lead the organization. Charlotte saw the need to fully commit to keeping the program running while maintaining its integrity and also taking a fresh look at how best to ensure the sustainability of what she believed was the only way to treat women, and that is by providing long-term treatment. Now, in a relatively short time, Charlotte became a rock star in Tattus World, and her car knew I-40 well. She became the president of this great organization and used this platform to do many wonderful things, one including, in her time, the removal of the fetal assault bill. Mary Linda Salter viewed her as a partner and described Charlotte as committed to the growth of Tadis and to its mission. Tadis has worked over many years and decades to represent the field of addiction, but Charlotte helped shape a greater recognition of that position within the organization and with our community partners. Charlotte was always accessible and agreeable to taking things and talking things over and to being supportive of me as the leader, especially when change was hard and hard for some to accept. In addition, in her free time, she serves on the Memphis and Shelby County Anti-Drug Coalition and the Tennessee Treatment and Advisory Committee. Her team members described her this way. Charlotte works day and night to keep the train on the tracks. This term was used to describe Charlotte's belief in the necessity of long-term treatment for women. She believes that that long-term treatment is not only achieved by a quick fix, but consistently rejects efforts to hurry the process of recovery. I've known her to be, her staff has known her to be extraordinary and go to extraordinary lengths to ensure that no client is turned away from treatment because of their ability to pay. I've known her, they have known her, to jump in her own car and rescue a woman who's desperate to get treatment but had no transportation. I've known her to reach out in her own pocket to meet the needs of our clients. Although these might be normal tasks for frontline staff, her staff said, it's not often that you see a leader with this passion and executive role. And we love Charlotte. We're fortunate to have Charlotte, they're closing. We're fortunate to have Charlotte at the helm of our organization. But ultimately, they said, she's a gift to other recovering women who never thought they could find their way back to life filled with hope and possibilities. I know you're gonna join me being so honored to serve alongside a leader like Charlotte, who has passion and heart and resiliency. Please join me in congratulating her right now 
as the CEO of the year for TATUS in 2016. I think I'm one of those that could call and fall into the category of speechless right now. Um, wow. Where's Michelle? <coughs> oh, there she is. And Michelle, the other day, well, a while back, Michelle said to me, we have to go to that dinner. We have to go to the Tattis dinner. And I'm like, oh, you know, I usually go, no, we have to go to the Tattis dinner. And I'm like, okay, okay, I'll go to the Tattis dinner. So, uh, but she's done a really good job at keeping it quiet, you know. So, um, I really am honored. Um, I feel like probably one of the most fortunate people, which I haven't always felt that way in my life, but these days I feel like one of the most fortunate people because I get to work at Grace House. Um, I do have, I've been in recovery for 28 years. Thank you. And what I get to experience every day um, probably benefits me as much as it do the people that we serve. Um, there's a, there's a, I'm trying to think of something profound to say, it's hard. Now, I've, I've, been reading, I've been reading a book that's called Falling Into Grace, and, and it's, it's attached to Grace House in a lot of ways. But in that book, the author talks about how um, um, grace is, is like one of the most astounding elements in the spiritual life. And uh, it talks about how, you know, in, in order to be able to receive grace, it's kind of like all we have to do is have an open mind and an open heart. And to, in a sense, suspend those things that we know. It's like we come to a point where this little realization comes in that maybe we don't know what we think we know. And when we have that little opening and we have that little gap, it's the opportunity for us to get hit with this rush of a different kind of reality, a way of being able to look at things in a different way. And... Um, that's what we see happening with the women that we serve, that, that really, you know, they come in oftentimes with, you, you, you know, no hope, think things really, really aren't going to change. Um, the court has sent me here, so I'm just going to do my time, and I've learned the language at the last treatment center. And, and, um, but when they're there, one day they look one way, and the next day they look different real different and when they look real different is when that little split second that little gap has happened and their reality has changed and oh if I can breathe um, that's what makes being in this field so special and and for me one of those things that switched in my mind is to realizing so, you know, we all, do, we all do good work and we're all committed to our work. But for me to realize what a gift that the clients are to me because they help me see a side of myself, many sides of myself, that without them, I really don't know how I would have gotten to that point. I know that my capacity for compassion has grown exponentially. Um, and I think that... Um, I owe a big debt to them. And I really think, speaking of a, a switch in the way we think, I, I think that you know, we're always concerned about resources and how we're gonna treat more people. And as we already know, you know, peers are like, if we really need an army in the war on drugs, as we call it, then, then it's not just the peer recovery sports spe specialist, but Everybody that we treat is a, a person that potentially goes back home and goes back into the community and they're working at other, they may be working in another treatment center or they may just in their general life are impacting and influencing other people. And so it would be nice in 40 years if we didn't have to be here. Mm -hmm. um, 
So if we could, you know, invest in everybody that's in recovery and see them for the asset. They're an asset, you know. So we just kind of have to switch our thinking to, like, you know, if we can um, help our politicians and our judges to understand that, that this is an investment that we're making, and it's a good investment, you know. Um, also, Mary Lynn and I have really enjoyed working with you here at Tavis. And um, I'm a real big on collaboration, um, trying, to bring it, trying to bring us all together to use our numbers and our force and our, and our strength to make major shifts in the community. And I see that happening, and, that, and that's so exciting. And you're, you're right, when she said something about change is hard, change can be hard. And I know that, you know, we've, we've kind of gone through some of those growing pains here at Tadis, but it's been worth every bit of it. And um, um, just thank you all. I, I appreciate you so much, and I appreciate the award. Thank you.